I feel like a lot of reviewers on here, I mean, we have fragrance critics on here who are award-winning, they know their stuff, they just avoid these brands without kind of saying it. And of course, people are afraid of lawsuits, but what happened to freedom of speech? Why can't I say that this is my opinion on a certain brand without being afraid? Hi, my scented friends. Welcome back to my world of fragrance. Today's video is a candid one. I'm going to be addressing the brands that I no longer talk about, review, or purchase myself so much these days. This video has been a long time coming because I have slowly been phasing out some of these brands. And if you've watched my videos and following my journey this past period of time, you may have noticed. So let's talk about them. So the first group of brands that I have been sort of phasing out, you see them coming in and out of my content because I simply have the bottles I used to purchase them, is extremely overpriced perfumes luxury perfumes, perfumes that fall under this luxury category. Of course, I do mention some every once in a while and do keep note that when I mention them in the future, I will say that they are extremely pricey. I, I did in the past as well, just making it very clear. It hurts me when I see new creators on here or people who are new to the world of fragrance kind of just lust after these extremely expensive luxury perfumes as if that's like the fragrance goal is to own them when the reality is a lot of them actually aren't very original a lot of them actually do not use the most luxurious ingredients inside them a lot of them are just an illusion a marketing illusion that is usually how luxury goes in most industries if you look at fashion if you look at cars you're not exactly paying more for the function the function you could have gotten for a fraction of the price it's more the outer you know, appearance, the packaging, the service perhaps, if you go into their shops, things like that. The only thing that just really irks me about perfume is when these brands claim to be unique. Take Parfum de Mali, for example. I used to review their fragrances. I also own a few of their fragrances, but you haven't heard me talk about this brand for a while because you might, you know, be enamored by this price point and this whole luxury lifestyle illusion and then you go back and smell some perfumes from 1993 and you're like oh that smells very similar to so and so by Parfum de Mali or you try out their latest revelation and you're like that smells pretty much identical to something else that was released some years prior so the only difference between Parfum de Mali and some brands which are kind of like clone brands is actually the price the price point it's been hyped up enormously. Add on to this the amount of influencers here on YouTube who are sent out bottles and then speak about the brand or are paid to promote the brand, then you have this spiral situation that goes on where then people who are newcomers think that this is the brand that everybody has to have and it's certainly not the case. I'm not saying that they create perfumes that smell bad or that I dislike all of their perfumes. You can get a nice scent experience out of them. And I, like I said, I've bought some of them in the past, but is it really worth it? Not for me, not anymore. So now that we're speaking about these luxury brands, I think that it's important to talk about the packaging, the bling. The more bling, usually the more deceptive i would say there are certain brands on here with this you know bling bling the bling bling caps who are just throwing out bottles to influencers and as if they were nothing as if they were water and then expecting the consumer to pay 500 pounds for a bottle it just to me is like a slap in the face for the consumer if these bottles are really that precious and worth this much as much as you say that they're worth ingredient wise, why would you just be throwing them out like that? Profit margins in fragrance are very, very high. And that's normal even if you're having like a 50 pound fragrance, it costed a fraction to make that. But when it comes to luxury, you can just imagine how large that markup is. And I, I don't wanna do it, you know? I don't wanna pay for it. Especially when you go and smell a lot of the Roja perfumes and you're like, that smells very similar to this vintage fragrance or that smells very similar to that vintage Guernet. So you're not paying for that uniqueness again. Um, still doesn't mean that I don't like their fragrances. It's not like I smell them like, oh, like they're gross. I'm not saying that at all. It's just, again, in terms of being honest with you guys, you guys give me so much love and respect on a daily basis. I 
owe it to you to be completely honest about these things. So I'm kind of like, screw the views, you know? If I really cared about views, I would be talking about these brands day and night because I know that they do generate views. A lot of the big channels talk about them all the time and therefore they are hyped. So what you do, you follow the hype train if you want views. And I'm at a point where I, I don't care. Cargons du Bois, for example, have Oud as a huge incorporation of what they do, but it's mentioned time and time again by reviewers who know their stuff that there's an actual minimal amount of Oud in the fragrances. So if the expensive ingredient that is meant to justify the purchase actually isn't very present, what exactly are you paying for? Another brand that falls into this category for me is Tiziana Terenzi. Again, a very much about the bling and the outer, not so much about the inner. There are some nice smelling fragrances, but for nice, do you want to pay exorbitant? I don't. Now, the other group of brands that I am minimizing, trying to phase out as much as possible, is large group owned brands, specifically Estee Lauder. I don't agree with their ethics, so that's why you don't see me talk a lot about Tom Ford on here. Since Tom Ford was sold, you know, this normally happens. Quality goes down, uniqueness goes down, prices go up. <laughs> so go figure, they become a money-making machine. It's no longer about the quality so much. And as a freak head, I mean, if I want to call myself this, I need to sniff out these kinds of things and I need to give you guys the proper advice. This also includes Joe Malone, which I was never actually a personal fan of, but making them Estee Lauder owned also makes me even more mm, not interested. Le Labo, I've also phased out, I sold my bottles. Literally, there are hundreds of brands being created as we speak. I think that there are plenty of choices out there. There is no need to go to the most popular Sephora top 10, in my opinion. You can actually get closer to your money's worth with other brands which have passionate creators behind them, which actually go out there and pluck the ingredients themselves. These brands are on the rise as well. So that's who I'm gonna to choose to support. So all of this is your own choice. Who you decide to buy from is your choice. I will, of course, have these brands pop up here and there if I still own their bottles, but I'm not one to just say yes to a brand to send me products so that I can show it on the channel. Even though I would make you know a lot of money and views on that, that's not my goal with this channel. I do marketing for a living, okay? On a daily basis, I think about how to get people to buy more stuff, and that's not what I'm about when it comes to this channel. I'm not here to make you buy more stuff. I'm here to help you find valuable things, fragrances that are valuable, that are going to make an impact into your life, whether it's your mood or whatever, and not be super duper overpriced. Being a freak head is not about how much money you have in the bank. People with a large collection, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have a lot of knowledge about fragrance. It just means they have more money to spend on fragrance. So stay true to the path of wisdom. Follow your nose first and foremost, and be sure to go out and smell everything out there. Do not just take what a brand says for face value. I feel like a lot of reviewers on here, I mean, we have fragrance critics on here who are award-winning, they know their stuff, they just avoid these brands without kind of saying it. And of course, people are afraid of lawsuits, but what happened to freedom of speech, you know? Why can't I say that this is my opinion on a certain brand without being afraid? Another brand that I have phased out is also Creed. If you've watched one of my later videos on this book about the fragrance industry, this has also been a long time coming. It's been brewing. I own Creed fragrances. I've gotten rid of a lot of my Creed fragrances, but outer appearances and made-up stories are just not what I'm interested in. Now, I will still review fragrances where perhaps it's not for me personally to wear, but it's a well-executed fragrance. I think that there's nothing wrong with that. Not everything has to sit in with my taste because then we'll just have five people watching because nobody has the exact same taste. You can have similar tastes, but there will be perfumes that you disagree on. No two noses are identical and that's the beauty of it. We're happy that we don't have the exact same nose, the exact same opinion, and we don't you know, experience things the exact same way. We would all be wearing the one same perfume, wouldn't we? So if you would like to follow me on this journey, have more quality reviews, more affordable price points, then please continue watching my videos, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell so that you get notified every time a video comes on. And I also have my details for Patreon and buy me a coffee down below if you would like to contribute to this 
channel's ongoing success. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.